Hi Sevens, here we are again with yet another day of reading Sunny together. Hopefully you're ready for some fun listening and reading along. And as I usually do before we get into the new reading, I'll just start with a quick recap of what we read last week because, well, we did have the weekend in between, so I can't imagine you guys remembered what we read last week. So last week we read from page 116 all the way to page 126. Now I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but there was actually a lot of content that we had to unpack. We saw Daryl apologizing to Sunny for the fight that they had about Sonny not wanting to run anymore. Daryl was also going on a date with Miss Linda, who was Mr. Nico's sister. And remember, Mr. Nico is the man who always gives Sonny and Daryl the puzzles that are pictures of Sonny's mom. And while Daryl is out on his date with Miss Linda, Sonny's sitting alone at home and eventually he pulls out the photograph that his grandpa had given him earlier in that day. And the photograph is of Sonny's mom when she was pregnant with Sonny. Now Sonny intends to give that picture to Daryl, but Sonny also has a bit of a moment kind of reflecting to himself about what life with his mom around would have been like. Sonny then decides to devote an entire diary entry to his mom, talking about all the things that they would have done if she was still around, and how life would have been if she was still around. It was a pretty sad entry that was written by Sonny. And then the next two, so not one, but two entries in his diary are now directed towards his dad, Daryl. And there was a lot to unpack from those two entries that Sonny wrote to Daryl, but don't worry, we won't get into that today because, well, I already spent a lot of time getting into that and I want to get to the reading here, so I'll leave you with this. In the two entries that Sonny wrote to Daryl, Sonny expressed a desire from Daryl that he wants to see more affection from Daryl, he wants to see more acknowledgement from Daryl, he wants Daryl to be more like a parent. It was also a bit of a sad entry, but like maybe a bit of a necessary one for Sonny to get all these things off of his chest. And there's your quick little summary now, let's get to reading. So today we are going to read from page 127 to page 131. And as always, the pages are available to you in the slides below if you would like to follow along as I read, which I highly recommend each and every one of you do. I also forgot to mention that we are actually starting a new chapter today, chapter 8, which means including this one and then chapter 9, there's only two chapters left before we finish the book. So that's a little exciting. Okay, here we go. Chapter 8, Friday, page 127. Dear Diary, I have some news. Last night, after not being able to sleep, I got up and did something I've never done. Ever. I crept across the hall to Daryl's room. He wasn't home yet. I didn't just go in there for no reason. I went to put the picture that Gramps gave me on his nightstand. That's all. I pushed the door open slowly, slipped in, and closed it behind me. I had never been in there. Not that I can remember. I only remember being in my own room. In my own space, my own crib, my own bed. My whole life. But now I was in his room, and it was much cleaner than I thought. From what I could tell, minus the towers of stacked boxes of finished puzzles along the wall. In the dark, I crept to the bed, slid onto the side where the covers were already pulled back, climbed in, yanked the covers up to my chin. I laid on the left side, the side I figured he laid on. I have to tell you something, and it's going to sound weird, but by now, you know. I sniffed his pillow, buried my nose in it, and sniffed and sniffed. It smelled like nothing. Tried to know him. Tried to feel what it must be like to be him. To be here in his room, one half of a whole plan, broken. One half of a person, maybe. And then, and I don't know why I did this, I slid over. Slid over to what I guessed was her side. It was cold and the sheets were so flat, so stretched, that they seemed hard. Like maybe bodies on cotton makes it softer or something. It was like resting my body on a thin sheet of ice. It's shattering underneath my weight into water. I pulled the pillow from behind my head and while lying flat on my back, I hugged it. I sniffed it. I imagined. It smelled like something. Something maybe her. It smelled like her. Maybe her, I imagined. And I started to cry, and sniff, and cry, and sniff, and bury my cry, and cry again, and squeeze, and squeeze, and sniff, and cry, and squeeze, and squeeze, and then not bury my cry, and cry, and try, try as hard as I could to swallow my howl, squeezing the pillow tighter and tighter till I felt something on my skin, something soft, like feathers, but not feathers. Too big to be feathers. Too... I don't know. I didn't know what it was, so I reached over and yanked the lamp chain, the room instantly warming with light, then freezing once I realized what was happening, what was tickling me. Not feathers, not feathers at all. Ribbons. First place ribbons. Years worth of them. I sat straight up in the bed and snatched the pillowcase off the pillow. The ends of it, badly stitched together, were bursting, ribbons pushing through like guts. My squeezing had caused the seams to come loose. I started yanking the ribbons out. Years and years and years of them. 
first place, first place, first place. Long ones, short ones, first place, first place. And the whole time I'm still crying and now it's louder because I wasn't trying to swallow it anymore. And I'm pulling them out and crying and pulling and crying and suddenly Daryl opened the door. I didn't hear him come in the house or walk up the steps or anything. He just appeared, just stood there in the doorway, staring at me covered in ribbons as if I had jumped in a pile of leaves, first place leaves. He didn't say nothing. He didn't ask me what I was doing in his room, in his bed. He didn't ask me why I had destroyed the pillow. He didn't say a word. He just stood there. It was only when he came in that I even looked up long enough to see all the other pictures. The ones from their marriage, them kissing, them laughing, them in college, in high school, in middle school, them everywhere. He was shaking as he slowly walked to the other side of the room his eyes never leaving me. And then he sat on the edge of the bed, crawled into the midst of the mess I made, and hugged the rest of my tears out. He said he was sorry again, but this time for everything. For what happened to your mother, for making you run, for running, and for shutting down. In a voice that sounded like a sound I don't think I've ever heard, he said it over and over again. His arms wrapped around me, and my eyes on the nightstand. We were two S's, SS, lying side by side, ships, finally docked in the night. Wow, that was a pretty emotional reading, wasn't it? And there's certainly a lot to unpack from that one, but don't worry, I'll make it quick. So Sonny went into Daryl's room for the first time because he wanted to see if he could learn a little more about his dad. As we know, Daryl and Sonny have a very, very distant relationship. He starts doing some strange things like sniffing the pillows to try and see if he could learn more about Daryl, or at least that's how he put it anyway. And then Sonny moves to the other side of the bed, which would have been his mom's side of the bed. He talks about how it feels very unlived in, how there's been nobody laying on that side of the bed. He grabs what would have been his mother's pillow and begins to hug it. And he sniffed it as well, and while he was smelling it, he tried to imagine again what his life with his mom would be like. And so there's a bit of a sad scene there. Sonny begins to bawl while he's holding his mother's pillow. And while he's bawling and he's squeezing the pillow, he's hugging it, he notices something tickle his arm. And so he turns on the lamp and discovers that the pillow was not stuffed with feathers, but it was stuffed with first placed ribbons. Not just one or two of them, but a whole bunch. And seeing these ribbons makes Sonny even more emotional than he already was because he knows exactly who those ribbons belong to. He walks in and sees Sonny on his bed with his pillow opened and destroyed, all the ribbons strewn all over the bed, and he doesn't say anything to Sonny. Daryl just continues to stare at Sonny as he walks around the bed and lies down on the bed in the pile of ribbons that Sonny had left there. It's at this time that Sonny also notices all of the other pictures that Daryl has of himself and of Sonny's mom. Now remember, Sonny's main goal when he went into Daryl's room in the first place was just to give him the picture that his grandfather had given him earlier, the one of his mother while she was pregnant at the barbecue. Daryl crawls onto the bed and embraces Sonny. And then Daryl starts apologizing for everything. For what happened to Sonny's mom, for making Sonny run when he didn't want to, from running away from Sonny all the time, and for shutting down and shutting himself away from Sonny. He's basically telling Sonny everything that Sonny needs to hear and wants to hear. And this nice tender moment continues for the rest of the chapter where Sonny puts a nice poetic spin on it by saying, We were two S's, SS, lying side by side, ships, finally docked in the night. And there you have it, yet another small but jam-packed reading. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys tomorrow.